Hey, it's Justin Potney from the Mixed Morning Grind. We are on our Heartland tour, and our first tour stop is in the town of Bonacord. We've got Mr. Mayor joining us now. Greg Mosachek is with us. Greg, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Justin? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Now, let's go back a little bit. Uh, before you made your way to Bonacord, where were you from? Where'd you grow up? Uh, actually, originally born in Edmonton. And uh, just when I was a teenager, we moved to uh, Florida, actually, the whole family. So I spent about five, six years in Florida, in Dunedin. You might know it from uh, the Blue the Jays baseball. Uh, training camp. Yeah. Uh, back into Edmonton again when I was uh, at university. Um, went from Edmonton to Kelowna, a little time in Vancouver, back into Calgary, back to Edmonton. And 2008, made our way back, or, or made our way not back, but decided we wanted to find a small, nice community we could live in, that we were still connected to Edmonton for jobs and stuff. And uh we found Bon Accord, so. Well, that's uh, that's quite the uh, the uh, tangled way of getting there. A few detours here and there, but you made your way to uh, to Bon Accord, and it seems to be that that's where a lot of folks uh, are looking to settle down in, in towns just like Bon Accord. Yes, a- absolutely. Um, coming from like Calgary and Edmonton, I said, uh, born and raised there, used to large centers, but the hustle and bustle at a certain point, um, it's nice to get to a community. Um, my commute when I'm doing my, my regular job, uh, it's still, you know, 20 minute, 30 minute commute, but it's not bumper to bumper, slow crawl. It's fields and cows and uh, a nice drive. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a nice thing. So. So in your hours where you're not uh, having to be the mayor of Bon Accord, uh, I mean, I guess 24 or seven, you are the mayor of Bon Accord, but uh, what's your other uh, job that you uh, take care uh, of and, and pay the bills with? Currently last, last eight years, I'm a corrections officer at the Edmonton Remand Center. So. Oh, wow. Okay. So very, very different gigs, or is there some similarities between the two? Uh, you got to get really hard skin and be willing to take a lot of stuff. And uh, yeah, yeah, so some similarities there. Yeah, absolutely. No kidding. So I guess it's a pretty interesting year for you as mayor, because it was earlier this year that you were taking over the title of mayor. And now obviously we have another municipal election coming up in October. You're, you're not going to be uh, moving forward with that uh, come October, correct? No, that, that's correct. Um, so I was I was on council and, and originally uh, 2012. I, I came on at that point partway through in a by-election. Um, stayed on for another term for the four years when they switched up to that up into 2017 and then chose not, not to continue. Um, like you said, um, for, 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 for personal reasons, our pre- prior mayor, he, ha- he, he, he resigned and uh, it came up, um, well, I mean, November, d- December sort of thing. So, um, I, I saw that the hole there and I thought to myself, well, you know, I better make sure because it's kind of a weird time and not everybody's necessarily going to want to step up for it. So um, I put my papers in just on the off chance that, uh, you know, just in case. And, and lo and behold, it was, I was the only one. <laughs> so um, acclamation I, and, and here I am. So, you know, a, a lot of people wouldn't be willing to take the keys during a pandemic, but somebody needed to step up and you did that for your community. That's to be commended, I'd say. Well, you know, and the thing is um, the, the, the council but prior to me being here, I mean, they were doing a fine job. Our administration, really great job. Um, that that's one of the things that that really shows you how well Bonacord is doing is that we we came out of this quite strong. Um, yes, there's a lot of things that had to be done and adjusted and changed, but uh, uh, Bonacord just pulled right through, and um, yeah, and, and we're and we're here and we're continuing on, and hopefully this will go away and we can continue doing the job that uh, that that we were doing before this all started. So. Absolutely. And that's kind of one of the things I keep on hearing from folks involved a lot with with the town and how things are progressing forward is that the council's had a lot of vision in the direction that the town's wanting to go. And that's coming to fruition a little bit more day by day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, said there, there was a period, I think, where, where it, the, the town sort of, sort of stalled a little bit, just maybe 15, 20 years back kind of thing. And it, um, so, yeah, there, we, we've had some things that uh, decided uh, very much we want to be environmental stewards. Of, of and, and that's a big thing across the board. Everyone was looking at that, but uh, we, we took it with our uh, initial dark sky de- designation. So we did a light efficiency policy that was, uh, and, and bylaw that was like extensive. People are actually calling us once in a while to ask if they could look at it for, for their own communities. Um, so we got that designation. We, we, we thought to ourselves, well, we could always do like the world's largest something to make Bon Accord stand out, but what are we gonna do? The, the world's largest what? And yeah. this was something that was, unique and different. So we're the first in Canada to have this designation and we're the 11th in the, in the world. So um, that was a start. Tied to that now we have um, just recently here last year, um, our solar farm 
got operational. So that's another um, unique thing that we have. We have the largest solar farm in Sturgeon County at, the, at this point. Um, uh, it's it's going to, like I said, it's paying for itself, which, which is the, the really awesome thing about uh, a solar farm. It's, it's one of those things that you build it and you're not actually paying for it. It's paying for itself. And then it's going to be covering off our electrical costs for all of our municipal buildings. So it's, uh, yeah, different. Like I said, we're trying to stand out in, in, in ways that other communities don't. So, Well, and let's talk a little bit more about that dark sky designation, because lots of people see it. Maybe they don't quite understand exactly what it is. Can you give us some background on exactly what the dark sky designation is for the town yeah. of Bonacourt? Yeah, so so light pollution has has always been, a, a, or it's starting to become a, a really big, big issue in the world. And uh, and. It's, it's not so much about making things dark and it's kind of a, a misnomer, I guess, or, or in, in correct way it's said, it's, it's actually about just keeping the light pointed in the correct direction. So we want the light down, we don't want the light up. So basically it allows not to interfere with birds and, and sight of the stars and everything else. Um, so like I said, it was very strong that we had to have a light efficiency policy so that we could say, okay, all the lighting had to be shrouded. It has to point a certain direction, certain levels. To maintain our thing, uh, our, our designation, we, we have to actually yearly go through readings throughout town saying, you know, okay, our level, light levels haven't changed. New businesses coming in, they have to be aware that if they're putting up signs, those signs have to be conforming to our bylaw so that we, we keep that light downward where it needs to be and not up and causing interference into the world. Very interesting. And, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, the personalities of different communities. And, you know, Bonacourt is a changing community, but it still wants to keep that same personality. What do you think is the personality of Bonacourt? What makes it special compared to other uh, communities, not only in Sturgeon County, but throughout the province as well? Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's when, when we were looking at, like I said, we came here in 2008. And what we're looking for is we were looking for something. I wasn't ready to be on, a, on an acreage and deal with septic tanks and, and well water and, and my garbage having to be carted off by myself in the back of a truck or something like that. So we were looking for something that was a community that was what we were used to. So Bonacourt, nice small community, very friendly people, very very rural feeling in, in some ways, but we're on Epcor water, city water, our sewers to the thing. We have um, internet, big thing of the thing is rural internet. We have high speed internet. like so. It was like coming from a city into a small city, but without that big city feel, having a small right. community feel, if that makes sense. Well, without all the, the hassles of the big city living, you're, you're able to find a little room to breathe. Ex exactly. And the thing is in Bonacourt had, uh, it was one of the things we looked at. It's like, if, if we shut off everything and we, we couldn't leave Bonacourt, we had everything that we needed here to be able to, to live. We have some grocery store, gas station, it's open 24 hours, so you can get there at nighttime and get a jug of milk if you have to get that. Restaurants, um, unfortunately last year, uh, started early last year, we had a fire and it took out one of our um, really nice restaurants. Uh, it, it was a rib place and connected to it was also our liquor store. And so we, we sort of lost that. We're, we're, we're looking to replace that and we have some things that are coming up and hopefully that will allow that to come back in. But, but it was very much, um, it had basically everything that we needed. Recently, we've added also uh, a pharmacy and a doctor now. So we have the little medical clinic here. And so that's a, a huge ad for free community. It's like I, I was having to go to my doctor originally middle of, of Edmonton every time. And now it's like, I'm moving slowly to having it here. And I get all my pharmacy stuff here. Don't have to go to anywhere else. So um, those kind of small things all come together. And if, if you need to go outside, we're not that far from the North end of St. Albert where you've got your big box stores and everything else. Um, We'd like to expand here. We would. Um, the things that we're always looking at, of course, is are, are we viable? These are the standard words. Are we viable? Yes. Are we sustainable? Yes. We've been here since 1979 as a town, 125 years in, in the area overall kind of thing. Um, can we do better? Always. Always we can, we can do better. And we're always looking at that to see where can we go. We have um, Highway 28, which goes right past our south edge here and so we have a lot of frontage that's a lot of traffic a lot of commuter traffic a lot of transport and, and goods and trucks and so we just have to tap into that and if we can get the right people in here and do the right things we can have a nice community that would be really vibrant would have access to some of this stuff and yet we can still maintain that small town feel so for sure and you're going to see continued population growth when it comes to humans but i'm also hearing that there's some population growth when it comes to sheep as well yeah. Yes. Our, 
Our community is going to enlarge a little bit here for the summer because they're coming in to uh, keep the grass down underneath our solar farms. So uh, that's a that's a nice environmental thing also, and um, it's it's free labor, which is always a wonderful thing too. <laughs> and they're getting a meal out of it. I mean, yeah, yeah, no. Nope. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about uh, when it comes to the new services. I mean, the, obviously services are coming into the community as well. Are jobs coming in to Bonacore? Do you see that happening? Well, that's that's part of where this this has, has to go. So um, COVID unfortunately has slowed down a little bit of some of the things that were happening. Um, we have a, um, a group that was um, opening a uh, micro cannabis cultivation or cannabis micro cultivation, if you want to go that. Um, just on the north part of our town. Um, that's been kind of slowed down by the, the, the whole COVID thing and construction and everything else. But we're hoping that'll continue, can, that can bring jobs in. Um, we have uh, just across the way here, we've just okayed for another development that's going to add some more commercial space. And so hopefully those will be able to allow people to get some stores open and bring some stuff in that way. And then, like I said, on our frontage, there's a whole lot. We um, just at the end of 2016, we had annexed some sections just to the west of us. And uh, that one piece that's that said that adds to our frontage. So we have a lot of room in our frontage, just a matter of getting the right people going and uh, getting some stuff in here. And that would help if we said we can add a, a restaurant or two or some a Tim Hortons along the highway. I mean, that would be perfect for somebody to come along and uh, you know said, we got commuter traffic, you need that morning coffee sort of thing. And that would put some jobs into the community. So um, it's there, we're on the brink. It's just a matter of um, moving forward. I said, and coming out of this COVID thing, I think it's gonna be a really big push to get a lot of things restarted. And so I'm hoping that that's also, good. It, it, it's terrible to say, but the COVID thing can actually be in a way of a nice push for everybody to get moving along and uh, try to get a lot more going. So get things back to normal. Appreciate you uh, taking the time, uh, Mr. Mayor, to hang out with us a little bit today. Is there uh, anything else you want to add on the town of Bonacord and the great benefits that uh, folks can see if they uh, choose to maybe make that their new home? Well, like, like I said, it's, it's a wonderful community. Um, it's a very caring community, uh, especially, like I said, looking at this last year with, with the COVID, um, people have reached out for help and everyone's willing and able and coming around so um, if, you, if you want to be in a nice location where, it's, they said, it's a small town feel, it's a small rural feel in, in some ways, has all these things that you would expect in, in the city, um, come on out. Uh, I said, if we, can, uh, if we can get more people interested and uh, we can get things moving along, um, I see Bonacourt as, as, as being a, a nice little hub. And like I said, we're right in the center of Sturgeon. So we're, we're poised in a really good location and just a matter of, uh, of, of time at this point. So. Congratulations on Bon Accord being our kickoff community for the Heartland Tour. Well, Justin, we really appreciate uh, being here and thank you for helping us to showcase our, our, our fine community.